Hello guys, welcome back to Potence War, and today we will continue in the Wargaming and its scale series, and now we will look when millimeter define the miniatures, because in the last video we looked how to categorize games by the number of models on the table, and today we will take a look how to categorize them by the model size. And if you don't you know, solve the previous video, it doesn't really matter for this one, but I well, well sort of recommend it to you, so check it out, I will put link in the description. So let's get back to the well, this video. So these numbers and the subsequent model size that derives from them are not random, but represent the size of the actual human pieces on the table. Thus, in 28 mm games, the figure representing the human is, well, or should be 28 mm in size. However, there is often differences how the size is calculated. Some manufacturers take the wall figure from well, the bottom to the top of the head, and others take is only to the eye level, so creating difference in one or two millimeters. Before we start with the scales themselves, there are a couple of criteria that are reflected in the size of the figures, whether they are so-called heroic or true scale models, loosely, which could translate it as, you know, comic book miniatures or more like realistic looking miniatures. His name already suggests that, well, classic example of the heroic scale is in Warcraft, because the, <laughs> their soldiers have almost every time the head in the same size as the chest. And of course, these long, well, sort of monkey, uh, monkey like arms. And the best example from this is the old Imperial Guard miniatures from these workshop games. They have these big heads and super long arms. The realistic proportions are formed on, you could say, more artistic figure lines, and mostly in majority of historical wargaming. But also, most models stick somewhere in the middle, and even the new game workshop releases, you can see that they are more shifting from the heroic to the more like realistic true scale proportions. Let's start with larger and uh, 32 millimeters and larger. This is a very specific scale which is currently popularized basically by the game workshop. The latter has continually increased the size of its models in order to well, sort of re-release other release models between editions indirectly forcing players to acquire more and more models for units they already own. Why? Because then they wouldn't fit aesthetically into their old armies, even if every other miniature would be basically head, head bigger. There is even sort of a term in for this phenomena in the hobby. It's called scale creep. Nowadays, these workshop models are starting to slick the outgoing even the 32 millimeter ones, Yet, Warhammer in its early day was a classic game with even 25 millimeter ga millimeter models. So, sort of, they are, you know, half half way bigger than the first and two second editions. So let's get to the 28 millimeters, which is probably the most popular scale for you know sort of large models, which in Heroic scale includes some of the old Warhammers and more or less all skirmish games or regimental ones, which is well sort of topic of the last video, are in this in this in this scale. The popularity of this scale has advantage that is as well, there is no problem to get trained and rules for it, and you can get basically pretty much anything you think of in 28mm. For example, in case of World War II games. It even opens up the world of possibilities for putting military equipment in plastic. As 1 to or 1 slash 48 scale, vehicles fit really well with 28mm miniatures, giving you access to a plethora of kits, although even that advantage doesn't carry the same way as it as it did years ago, because now we have the free printing, you can print basically anything in any scale. The 28mm kits are large enough and ideally, ideally little enough, which makes them excellent for small scrimmage games, 
where a few nice models with tons of details and great deal of personalization is really welcome. However, this can also be a problem when you want to play bigger battles and you need to paint, sometimes glue together, a couple of hundred or even thousands of detailed miniatures and that's so complex stuff that it can take even months before you are, well, basically ready to play a full paint game. Similarly, 10 to 8 mm models run into space for plans in larger games. They are sailing how many can you fit on the table, and from certain numbers you need to rent a, well, sort of chain to play that. Or also, we'll do the smaller scans. 25 mm. Here is a bit of sort of an honorable mention, because 25 mm scale was popular something like 20 years ago. But its place was gradually taken by the larger 28mm, and nowadays it's only targeted sort of retro models. Or models you found a second hand from the old war gaming veterans or some or some manufacturers which still carry their old war gaming lines with 28 uh, sorry, 25mm scale. But with slick of exaggeration, so hopefully nobody will Mad for me, it's sort of dead scale no day. But in my opinion, it's still sort of okay to combine it with the 28mm at the table because after all, nobody will sort of spot it and people are in different sizes in real life too. So we will now get to do 20 or 22mm scale or K1 slash 72. Because this scale is interesting in that it's not seen as a True wargaming scale nowadays, but it was really popular in you know 80s and 90s and stuff like that, and it's still a starting scale for some players nowadays who want to start with mainly historical wargaming and don't know well what to buy because there is plenty of 20 millimeter scales in all sorts of hobby shops and bottle shops so. Many, many gamers I know, they started uh, with wargaming or miniature painting for war games that they buy one of these boxes in the, in the model shop. However, it's possible to get really many models and many model ranges from mainly from medieval Napoleonic so to Second World War in 1 to 72 in Really, basically, any hobby shop anywhere when you go. So it it has some parts still, but sadly, it's not really popular anyway. Because, to be honest, the main I think disadvantage of twenty millimeter is that they are basically in sort of mono poses and without many details, which many gamers are now using twenty eight millimeter. So. There are sort of still retro, retro miniatures as the 25 we talked about earlier. So let's get to do 15 millimeters. 15 is by far, in my opinion, the most popular small scale due to combination of its amazing cube versatile size, which allows you to fit a bunch of models with well a room to maneuver on a relatively small table, but is also big enough for the, the better models to have level detail that is sort of close to 28 millimeters. This makes it a great scale for large scrimmage or regimental games, because you still have a nice, detailed models, you can have hundreds of them on the table and still fit it and on the table with some train and have, well, room for maneuver. So if you want to play some sort of modern gaming, which ultra-modern or Second World War, you can buy ve vehicles for these in the, also in the classic model shops, because 15mm is basically 1 slash 100 scale, so there's lots of lots of manufacturers who made uh, vehicles for this 1 to 100 scale. So if you want to play Cold War, Modern, Second World War, you can get cheap plastic vehicles in scale, any problem. Personally, I have well, lots of them. So 10 millimeters. 10 is a strange scale, in my opinion, between 6 to and 15 millimeters, which is not very, I would say, traditional or represented in my opinion. Because 
15mm simply has more details and 60mm is, surprise, smaller. Nevertheless, in the last years I saw several you know, armies to appear in my proximity. And also Warlord Games Epic Blackboard range started with sort of 12 to 13 millimeters with the American Cyber War. But even Warlord Games sort of find out that it's sort of weird scale. And I think the Napoleonics are more like 15 millimeters. And I have sort of huge collection of 15 millimeters or epic pile, pike and shot from Warlord Dates. And they are, well, basically they are 15 millimeters. They fit to with the 15 millimeters miniatures without any problem, so I'm not sure about the new Hell Caesar sets for Punic Wars, but I think that even Warlord sort of said that their 12, 13 millimeters experiment with American Civil War was, I won't say mistakes, but but the dead end, and they switched to the 15 millimeters anyway. So let's get to the six millimeters. Which is sort of my beloved. Because on this scale, you can play large battles when the models still have some details, but at the same time, you can fit not hundreds, but really actual thousands of them on traditional table. This makes it possible to play the battle of massive, massive mass of soldiers on a relatively small table. And in the case of small historical battles, well, it's not even a problem to play them on one-to-one -one model to soldier ratio. This scale is equally prominent in battles of military technology, but it doesn't matter if it's Battle of Kurs or Battle of Kaidea, because the scale was chosen by Games Workshop for the now defunct Epic, which was the large scale 40k format and Adeptus Titanicus. So it's not just historical scale, but it was sort of popular even in Warhammer 40k. And it's also, incidentally, the most widely used scale for the actual United States Army. If you want to play with model design for the army, well, you, you are free to do. Because you can buy, buy them for just from GHQ. Hopefully I spelled the acronym right. Company which has been making wargaming miniatures for the United States Army since the Vietnam War. You will probably be impressed because I am by the level of detail on the such small scale because actually their six millimeter kits look sort of better than or more detailed than some 28 millimeter vehicles also does that it's that it's the price which is well not more like six millimeter kits but they cost something like 100 kids or even 1 to 72 kids so they're yeah, more or less expensive but even GHQ is Sort of prove that even in the small six millimeter scale, you can have really super detailed miniatures. So let's get even to the small size, and that's three millimeter. With the three millimeters, we are sort of reaching ceiling. What can be technologically proceeds in the form of the figure? To the point, it's still a sort of figure or miniature, and not just a blunt blob. Three millimeters already allows you to play really massive battles, but it takes a very good eye and commitment to find very fine details and that will not be really visible in the game anyway. Plus, at a scale, the model, or you could even say bases, are easily replaceable with tokens and there is, you know, the thing you can, something you can think about it. If you will play something in 3 millimeters. If you can just, you know, play with the tokens. But also, I have 3mm modern miniatures, so I get you if you play with the 3mm miniatures. And now we will get to do 2mm. And this is basically more like, you know, making scenic bases than we are talking about miniatures. But still, I never saw it in person, but I saw some, you know, two millimeter armies on the Instagram and stuff like that. And mostly, I think everything I saw was uh, ancient. And even in the two millimeters, it still have some sort of 
you know, essence of the miniature wargaming. You still see the uh, sarisas or elephants, stuff like that. It's it's still, you know, 3D. You can see them, but in my opinion, it's really a point where you could switch for tokens and basically nothing will happen. And now we are almost at the end. And let's talk a little about hexes, boats, or planes. Because, well, if, when the plastic models are not enough, you could switch for the paper caliber tokens, and that's what is usually used for hex for gaming. Which I tried some of them. They are basically the same fun as miniature wargaming, but of course they are probably specialized on different aspects, but I think Hex Wargaming with tokens is still, you know, true wargaming like miniature one, without question from if you ask me. And when it comes to the naval or org games, we usually use models. But they are not, you know, categorized by millimeter size, but the scalar action is model kits. So we could say that, for example, the Black Seas for World Games, which is the naval game from Age of Sail, is, well, nominally a 3mm game. Basically, nobody will ever say that the <laughs> Black Seas is 3mm game, but we use the, the same way as and the model kits, and we refer to it as 1 slash 700. And because, anyway, we, it's sort of 3mm as well. It's not used for these small scales, even for same way is for the, you know, air air war gaming, or or other other naval like this. For example, the GHQ miniatures, which I mentioned earlier, they have huge naval naval range, and I have so they're. Uh, Imperial Japanese Navy. They are one slash I think two thousand fourteen, and that's how they are. You know, talk about nobody say it's whatever would be something like they are zero point I don't know zero three millimeters. Nobody used them, and I think that's end of our talk about different scales in war gaming. Hopefully you now know the difference between scrimmage and regimental games, which was in the last video. And when it's possible to incorporate model scaling between millimeters, millimeters to size mini in the size of miniatures. So now you really said to well, sorry wargaming if you are going to. And in the next video. We, I will also talk specifically about how to start with Wargaming. So, if you're about to start, do you have a friend who is about to start? I, I will make a video which could help you. Also, I, I'm i sure I missed something in the video. For example, I didn't talk about, I think it's 54 millimeter scale, which is sometimes somewhere still played. But you you know you know you can talk about everything in the video. Even now it's also almost twenty minutes long, which is sort of long. So hopefully you enjoy it. It was more entertaining and educational. If it was, don't forget to like, subscribe so you will see the my next video. <laughs> and if you have any questions or you disagree with me on something. Don't forget you can leave a comment and tell me that. So hopefully I will see you in the next one. Bye guys.